Hello listeners, a warm welcome to Views on Health. A great pleasure to have with me on the program tonight, Dr. Tushan Gunaratna, consultant vascular and transplant surgeon at the North Colombo Teaching Hospital in Ragama. A great pleasure over and over again when we have a consultant coming for the first time to this it is a program. So welcome to SLBC and our studios, doctor. Thank you very much, Fatima. Thanks for inviting me as well. Our pleasure, doctor. And for the information of our listeners, uh, Dr. Tushan Gunaratna, sp- specializing in vascular and transplant surgery, has chosen the topic varicose veins, a topic that we have discussed over the series of programs quite some time ago. And uh, according to Dr. Gunaratna, there is a need to bring it back into focus in view of the number of cases that people present themselves with the issues pertaining to varicose veins. And uh, let's see what Dr. Gunaratna has to tell us about the current situation on varicose veins. Over to you, Doctor. Thank you, Fatima. Uh, thank you to you all. Um, varicose veins, like Fatima correctly said, is, is a very common problem. Um, veins uh, are by definition doing a function in the body and like any other part of the body their job uh, is to bring back the blood that's in the body back to the heart to make sure it keeps on uh, circulating Um, unlike its colleague the arteries which take blood from the heart to the rest of the body it doesn't have the luxury of having a heart to pump uh, the blood for it so veins need external help to make sure the vein uh, blood comes back Normally, these veins are not visible unless you have very fair skin. Uh, but sometimes these veins become very big, they become chunky and thick, they become blue and stand out, and that is what we call varicose veins. Um, the veins uh, are adapted in a very nice way uh, to make sure the blood keeps on coming uh, to the heart. And, and for this purpose, they have some valves. It's, it's important that these valves are there to make sure blood doesn't keep coming back down. Um, The varicose veins are really a problem of the the legs, Fatima, than the rest of the body. Uh, Unfortunately, the legs uh, are not favored by gravity. As long as we are standing or sitting down, the legs are always dependent and blood keeps on pooling. If we walk a bit and get the muscles pumping up a bit, it squeezes the blood and brings the blood back. Um, And as long as the valves are fine, it makes sure the blood keeps coming back. For some reason, these valves don't work. And when that happens, blood tends to pool. And the veins collect blood, they become bigger, and they become thick and chunky. And that's when you have this whole problem of varicose veins. Um, Things are still the same in terms of the varicose veins are a big problem. If you look at hospital practice or patient practice, it is the commonest presentation. Uh, if you see 10 patients in a clinic, six or seven have varicose veins. There isn't really a, 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 a age or gender that is uh, not affected by varicose veins. Everyone's affected apart from children. But it is more common among females and tend to be more common among the younger population. Um, we don't know exactly why this happens. But if you have a family history of varicose veins, maybe your father or mother had varicose veins or uncles or sister siblings, then there's a chance that you also have varicose veins. Um, especially because it's a gravity dependent thing. If your job or your lifestyle means you're standing up or sitting down for a long time, and for example, teachers, air hostesses, uh, healthcare staff, anyone who's standing for a long time, they are at higher risk. Pregnancy has an effect because all these blood tends to go through the pelvis and when there's a lot of pressure um, in the pelvis because of a fetus, that causes varicose veins. It's very common among females to notice that one, they have varicose veins during pregnancy and two, they tend to persist after the pregnancy as well. Uh, So those are the main reasons um, why people do get varicose veins. Sometimes our actions also contribute if we are not very active, if we keep on being very sedentary, um, not getting around to do some exercises, that doesn't help the cause. Uh, your body fat is a big important factor, especially your abdominal fat, and, and that has a huge effect on building up pressure on the veins. 
smoking is another factor like those. So there are reasons why you may be contributing towards having a varicose veins, even if you haven't had a family history or a, a reason why you should. But even if you're not having any of them, if you had a family history, uh, there's a chance that you may be having varicose veins. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for that very uh, lucid and uh, detailed introduction to varicose veins and how it can come about. Interestingly, you said that um, the muscles, when a person moves about, uh, can sort of uh, um, help to pump the blood back. I mean, sort of constrict the veins, I guess. Uh, yep. Correct me if I'm wrong, because the medical things that I'm totally you have, you out, right. out of my depth. Um, so, um, so it's so. A question here is that, and you also said those who don't move around uh, can are prone to getting it uh, more than the others. In the day, doctor, okay, we go to like an older population. You said the younger generation also are prone to it. We'll come back to that later. But the older population, when we come across, say. Uh, women who are compelled to be on bed for whatever reason, old age, maybe it's a fracture, maybe something else. So in such situations, uh, are they prone to get on top of all what they have, uh, varicose veins as well, that can affect them? Or is there a way of avoiding that, say by physiotherapy or some sort of movement of the limbs? So, yeah, absolutely, Fatima. So the your functionality is a big part in varicose veins. The only thing is you need to be standing up or sitting down for the veins to fill up. So if you're bed resting or you're bed bound or you're always on a bed, then basically the gravity brings blood back. The problem is, is when you are walking around, the gravity keeps blood pulling down and you're not doing enough work or enough activity or your muscles aren't working for any reason, maybe your ankles aren't as strong as they were. Uh, and with age, like you said, everything degenerates and the valves also get degenerated. So they, their function also goes down with time. They all contribute. It is unlikely for a person who is bed bound to have varicose veins. Uh, however, if a patient has had varicose veins and has ulcers and stuff, uh, then physiotherapy helps and contributes towards um, bringing the blood back. And similar principles are applying in the way we manage varicose veins and, and complications of these veins in the younger population as well. So could you explain that? How do the younger generation, younger people, uh, get afflicted with varicose veins? So the reasons are like what I said, uh, maybe a family history, maybe they have some uh, own reasons why they have aggravated these varicose veins. And sometimes even without any reason, they have varicose veins. Um, it's a very common problem, like I said, and um, they affect people in different ways. Uh, and that's a, I'll have a quick chat about that. Um, for most people, it is the fact that these veins stand out and, and it is unsightly. Um, blue veins, uh, sometimes just small tiny thread-like veins or like a spider web-like veins. But sometimes they can be very big and chunky, very unsightly. And these cause cosmetic issues to people. Um, things become a bit tricky when with the pooling of blood, fluid leaks out of it. And this causes swelling and this causes pain. And it's very common for people to feel that towards the end of the day, their legs are very tired, very achy. They're throbbing, they're like bursting. You cannot stand up for too long. You need to rest and bring your legs up um, for a quick nap or a quick rest. Um, and the pain and the discomfort is a real problem, especially for the working class who need to be able to work around. Uh, and that aching, tiredness, cramping, pain is a problem. Swelling, like I said, because of fluid accumulation, that is a problem. Uh, and, and that is also very common that they feel perfectly fine in the morning when they wake up. In the morning, the legs are nice and slim. Towards the end of the day, they're sewn up so much, it becomes a real big problem. Their shoes are too tight, their socks are too tight now. Um, so swelling is not the problem. With time, the blood in the veins tell to leak out and the red blood cells have hemoglobin and the hemoglobin has iron and this iron get deposited in the cells and the tissue of the skin. And this causes a very unsightly pigmentation of the legs, mainly around the ankles, on the inner or the outer aspects. And that is quite difficult and awkward to get rid of either. Um, and that causes the pigmentation and discoloring that are associated with these varicose veins. Um, if it's there for too long, 
the iron causes itching and irritation. It's very common to have eczema, itching, and various types of skin conditions because of these varicose veins. And um, uh, dermatological patients, all most of them have exacerbation of these skin conditions because of the varicose veins. Uh, at some point, the skin is going to give way, and it's called going to cause ulcerations, and that is a real problem in varicose veins. And anyone who has venous ulcers or knows a family member who has venous ulcers, they know how difficult it is. They're they're weeping. Um, they're always wet. And they're offensive in smell. Uh, even if you wrap it with a bit of gauze by the end of the day, it is all soaked. Um, you, you have drip marks on the floor sometimes. It is that bad. Uh, so these venous ulceration are the, the end of the a big spectrum of problem. That's not to say each s- s- uh, aspect of the symptoms aren't a problem. Cosmosis is a problem for some people. Uh, but when it comes into ulceration, there's a real big problem to all of us. Um, and that is the whole picture of, of what these varicose veins can do. Be it young, be it old, they're all affected in the same way. Uh, so, Doctor, uh, initially what will be visible is that the veins will be more marked and uh, that's how one would detect. And uh, along with that, would there be any discomfort or pain uh, before someone thinks, well, I'm having a problem. Look, You can look at your leg back of your knee right and then you look at it and then you see this and then you think okay I need to see my see a doctor so is that the initial sort of uh, uh, sign the manifestation that there is going to be uh, there is an underlying problem and it could get worse if it's not treated uh, yeah to Fatima you you will only see the veins that are really at the most superficial part of your skin uh, there are a lot of veins that are involved in varicose veins that are a bit deeper down, and you don't see them. Um, there are veins all the way from your groin up to the foot. Um, what you tend to see most often are the, the very tiny veins in the skin, or unless they really bulge out, and you see either bulges or thick cord-like veins. Um, and it's not always that you see veins um, with other symptoms. Sometimes you have the cramping, the tiredness, but you can't see any veins. Sometimes they come with a swelling, but you can't see any veins. Um, so seeing the veins alone isn't essential. You may see them, um, and sometimes it is normal to see veins uh, without any other symptoms. Um, so it's a bit um, difficult to say that there's a spectrum of how this present as to what one coming before the other. Uh, various presentations can happen. That is why it becomes so awkward, and with varicose veins becoming so common, some of the symptoms might not be because of varicose veins as well. And that is why it's important to know what these symptoms are. And if you have them, to see someone who can try and dissect the information and see actually are they because of varicose veins or are they because of something much more common and maybe normal to you. So where do you go from there now? Say a person comes to you and you diagnose it as the person having varicose veins. And from that point onwards, what is the process? Uh, yeah, so f- f- for us, Fatima, the first thing is to make sure there isn't an underlying cause that might be causing varicose veins. I spoke about all the good things that are there in varicose veins. Sometimes these veins can come because of a problem, uh, which could be uh, a previous DVT, for example, or, uh, or something in the, in the pelvis causing some pressure. So it's important that we as clinicians first make sure there isn't something that is caused in these varicose veins and these veins are purely primary in their etiology. If they are primary in etiology and we feel these patients are symptomatic or they need treatment, then we need to investigate in a certain way to find out why this has happened and where the problems are. Sometimes the problems are only in the leg, but the problem starts higher up in the groin. It's very important to find out where exactly the problem is so we can treat uh, the exact point where this problem happens. Uh, in our clinical practice, that would be a combination of clinical examination and also doing a, a scan, a simple ultrasound scan. Patient is standing up. Uh, we have a good look to see which are the damaged where veins, uh, which are the faulty veins, uh, where is the problem happening? Is it from the groin? Is it from the back of the knee? Or is it from in between somewhere? And it's important that we make those decisions uh, so that we can give the right form of treatment uh, to tailor each patient because it's important that 
an individual assessment is made uh, and an individual life treatment plan is given for each patient. Uh, so as you said now, uh, something that you spoke about, the underlying veins, which we don't know about. So as a doctor, you know. Um, so what we see is, as you said, and absolutely you're right, superficial, superficial just under the skin to that extent. So uh, there are a mass of veins underneath. And then you're trying to sort of see all of, and all those veins are affected. Am I right? Yeah. So there are a lot of veins that are affected. And there are also a lot of veins that are not affected. And uh, we cannot um, take away all the veins. We need to leave some veins behind because you need the veins to bring the blood back. But the body has lots and lots of veins. So our idea during our assessment and management is to find the ones that are damaged and only treat them uh, to, to discern the good ones from the bad ones and to treat uh, the bad ones and leave the good ones behind. Uh, the, the thing is, that means that your veins, some of your veins are left behind. And if you have a natural tendency for having varicose veins, there is a chance that these may come up later on. And whatever we do, we always tell the patients that there's a risk of recurrence. Uh, and we have a quick chat about that later on uh, as to how you can prevent or minimize the risk of recurrence. Uh, but that is the assessment we make uh, during our clinical practice. Uh, what is the treatment? So things have changed. You did say, uh, this was discussed before, and, and about 10 years back, uh, the only treatment mainly was surgery, and people uh, went through uh, anesthesia, had their groins cut open, had their veins pulled out, uh, which has complications. Um, the technology has evolved now, and it's more minimally invasive, and we are, as vascular surgeons, more promoting uh, a minimal invasive approach towards managing these varicose veins. Um, rather than taking them out, we leave them inside, but we damage the walls from inside the vein and they won't function afterwards. And this can be through heat and laser or thermal energy or ablation of their, the veins through heat is one option. And this is a very safe uh, procedure under the right hands. Uh, patients don't need anesthesia. It's a day case procedure. They come in uh, 20, 30 minutes procedure and they go home. And we also use what are called injections. People commonly call them injections. Uh, it is a chemical sclerosant that we inject directly into the veins that are affected. And, and these can sort those veins out, uh, especially the thread veins, the small veins that you see on the skin or the bigger veins. Um, and we do not discard surgery as an option, but that is also an option. So we have surgical options. We have heat therapy uh, through laser and, and chemical therapy through injections. Um, we don't yet have any topical applications that may help to reduce varicose veins, but uh, I wouldn't discount them. But there might be a group of people who do use them. And finally, there are stockings. Um, stockings help to keep the legs pressed, but they're not a permanent solution. As long as you wear the stockings, that will keep things okay. Uh, for a younger person, uh, for a working class person, it may not be a best solution. It might be useful to think about having a more a permanent solution to those varicose veins. And we, we decide between the options we have based on the scan, based on the patient, what is the more suitable method or methods, a combination of treatments that is most applicable for them. So do you uh, handle this as um, a vascular surgeon? Do you handle it as by yourself? Or do you have a, a multifaceted team? To deal with this? It tends to be more of an individual thing. Um, it's very difficult for me to look at a, a scan report of someone else and make a plan. Um, we as vascular surgeons end up doing our own scans and making a plan. And amongst us, we might differ in our opinion, but it tends to be more of a concurrence based on each patient. Um, so in reality, it is more of an individual thing, but there are it's important that the patient is involved, and that's the biggest team uh, between us and the patient. Because whatever we do, there is a risk of recurrences, and it's important the patient helps us by making sure he does everything he or she can to make them not come back again. What brings it back? How does it recur? So those aggravating factors, your, your, your body weight is going to contribute. And if you're obese, you're overweight, if your abdominal fat is uh, too excessive, that is a definite factor towards these veins coming back. 
So it's important to have a healthy lifestyle, eat well, keep on walking, doing exercises, making your muscles stronger, your veins stronger. They're really important. Um, smoking, you have to stop smoking. If you are, uh, that does not help those valves. Those valves keep on getting damaged. If your lifestyle is around keeping your legs down for a long time, it's important you take a small break every one hour or so. Uh, walk a bit, keep those legs pumping, keep the muscles pumping, make sure the venous blood is circulating. Um, eat healthy and drink healthy. Um, and sometimes we tend to give stockings for patients who are people who are prone to varicose veins. Because um, uh, you've got to avoid having um, cellulitis and stuff like that. So it's important that you keep your legs nice and uh, clean and healthy. Uh, doctor, just a question. This um, I just thought as more women are affected uh, than men, uh, and it say the more again the younger generation, or even thirty, forty, fifties, if they're wearing uh, heels all the time, uh, will that aggravate the situation? Because uh, as men, I mean, your shoes are always basically okay, comfortable, but in the case of women, uh, it's dressy to have, uh, uh, you know, wear heels. And then you don't, uh, you may, may be having them all the time, the day. Yeah. So, like I said, uh, because gravity isn't a friend of the varicose veins or the veins, uh, you need your muscles to start pumping. And the muscles pump in your ankles moving up and down. Uh, when you're wearing high heels, that is no longer possible. So the ankle muscle pump is affected if you're wearing high heels all the time. We men wear flat shoes and our ankles always move up and down as we walk. Um, so if you are having varicose veins or suffering from varicose veins, it is not to say not to wear high heels. If you can avoid them, that is always good. Even if you are wearing high heels, it's important to take a small break every hour or so. Take those shoes off a bit. It might look a bit awkward, but maybe have a quick walk around, get those ankles moving up and down. Um, and that should keep things better. So Dr. Time is catching up with us. What's your take home message? I think, uh, first, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I think take-home messages, varicose veins are very common. Uh, it causes a lot of symptoms, uh, and these symptoms may or may not be due to varicose veins. Cause they're very common symptoms as well. So it's important if you are suffering from such symptoms, you see someone who can dissect that information and make a clear diagnosis. And uh, things have changed. There's modern intervention now with minimal invasive techniques, uh, and these are more applicable for us. Uh, in the new generation and it's important you try and pursue uh, such minimal invasive techniques and stay safe uh, and eat and stay healthy. Thank you doctor and on that note of advice we end uh, a very interesting discussion on varicose veins and we thank Dr. Tushan Gunaratna, consultant vascular and transplant surgeon at the North Colombo Teaching Hospital in Ragama for sparing a very valuable time to come to our studios and speak to us on this interesting topic and enlightening our listeners on how to take care of themselves so as to avoid getting varicose veins. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you, Fatima. It's been my pleasure as well. As to Doctor. My thanks also go to Achala Gunasekara for technical assistance. I'm Fatima Razika. I'm saying good night and hoping to catch you next Monday, same time on Views on Health. <laughs>